This week, Tokyo Game Show kicked off. Oh, and there was this tiny little Mojang acquisition. Just a little one. And director Zack Snyder and J.J. Abrams got into a Batman vs. Star Wars battle on Twitter. Welcome to the Know It All for September 19th. I'm Meg Turney. And I'm Ashley Jenkins. If you're new to the show, here's how it works. We'll run you through all the top news stories of the week. And if you want to get more details, background quotes, all that fun stuff, just click the annotation down here and we'll take you straight to the full story. Also, we'll include links to all the stories at the end of the show and in the description for you mobile viewers. Because we like you. Where are you in the world? Mm, you're out. The biggest news this week by far has been the announcement that, yes, the rumors were true and Microsoft has agreed to acquire Mojang. And remember how the rumors said the deal could be for as much as $2 billion? Well, that was inaccurate because it turns out it's for $2.5 billion. But, yeah, what's in their $500 million between friends, right? Sadly, for many fans, other elements of the rumor were also true, including those that said Notch would leave the studio. He's checking out, and so are the other studio co-founders, Carl Mena and Jacob Porsche, leaving the future of Minecraft entirely in Microsoft's hands. On the bright side, Microsoft has committed to continuing development for other platforms, including PlayStation 3 and 4, PlayStation Vita, and the Mobile Pocket Edition. In fact, updates throughout the week have backed this up, hopefully reassuring those fans who are worried that they'd be left in the dust. In addition to a patch enabling PS3 users to migrate their worlds to PS4, Sony also announced that the PS4 version of the game is coming to disc on October 3rd, though they also caution users that there's already a day one update that they have to download to clear up a few bugs and issues. It's nice to have that week one announcement and then do things for the other platforms to prove it, to back it up. Uh, I also think that if anyone at Microsoft can take good care of Minecraft, it's Phil Spencer. He's been great for Xbox so far. He, uh, he dropped Connect as a required component. He dropped the focus on the entertainment to really get back into games. And uh, he, he really seems very passionate about Minecraft. So I think that, that he can do it, hopefully, possibly. Yeah, I think they have a really big opportunity. I hope they don't fumble this opportunity to make themselves, it's like, it's like a PR dream for them to be nice to other companies, to make themselves seem a little less evil, if you would. Um, also, Phil Spencer's great, because he doesn't listen to his PR team at all sometimes, and he just says whatever the hell he thinks, and as a reporter, I love that. <laughs> Guess what else is coming on October 3rd? Super Smash Brothers for 3DS. That was a great transition. It's actually <laughs> already out in Japan, and guess what? No surprise, it's doing amazing. In the first 48 hours alone, the game sold 1 million copies, which has only been done by four other titles, including Monster Hunter 4 and Pokemon X and Y. Amazing. Unfortunately for those early adopters, there was some trouble with online competitive modes, and as usual, poor Princess Peach was right in the middle of it. Oh, Peachy, what happened? One of her abilities allows her to throw a turnip, but there's a chance to draw and throw an item instead. Now, in competitive modes where throwing items is not allowed, Peach players were accidentally flagged as cheaters and banned from the game. Nintendo apologized and is fixing the bug, so this is one case where maybe it's not so bad to get it a little bit later. Kind of like the people who were banned, I bet they didn't feel good about getting it early. Uh, keep telling yourself that, but there are always advantages to being first. One of those is that you get to make all the new discoveries, like when Kyle McLean, who made the discovery that Wii U owners may be able to use their 3DS as a controller for Super Smash Brothers. At least that's according to an image he tweeted of the interface which told him pretty much that exact scenario and it's since been corroborated though Nintendo hasn't said much about it yet. Of course that doesn't do anyone much good since we don't know when the Wii U version of Super Smash Brothers will be available because Nintendo hasn't exactly set a release date yet. One retailer however has published pre-order cards with a date of November 21st so that's at least a possibility. Now, Nintendo is far from the worst about their release date windows. Tokyo Game Show is underway in Japan right now, I might have guessed by the name, and it's chock full of good date announcements like Bloodborne hitting February 6th in North America and Europe, and then there are some people that make Nintendo look positively specific. Hideo Kojima, for example. The legendary developer gave a release window for the long-awaited Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain, and it's going to be sometime next year? Great release window. <laughs> At least we're not waiting till 2016. Unless it's delayed. I love it, unless it's delayed. I love just telling somebody, like, I'll pick you up sometime in 2015. That's pretty much how I operate. <laughs> <laughs> he also detailed the Metal Gear Collection 2014, which he teased on Twitter a few weeks ago, but don't get too excited because it's probably not what you think. It's not an HD collection or PC version or anything like that. It's, uh, it's actually a line of clothing and accessories. 
Square Enix also came out swinging for the start of TGS with a new look at Final Fantasy XV and the news that game director Tetsuya Nomura has moved on from the project to focus on Kingdom Hearts 3. Final Fantasy Type-0 director Hajima Tabata is taking over and will offer a demo called Final Fantasy XV Episode Duske with Type-0 when the HD remake of that game hits on March 17th next year. Rockstar, at least, is joining the specific release date announcement party. While there's no word on heists, there is word on when it will finally hit Xbox One, PS4, and PC. And this time, it's not a rumor. It's not a rumor. <laughs> it's official. Close enough to the rumors, though. The Xbox One and PS4 versions will hit shelves on November 18th. PC, though? That won't be out until January 27th next year. The new versions will feature additional weapons, vehicles, and activities, and improvements like increased draw distance and more traffic. Those who played the game on Xbox 360 or PS3 will also get their own suite of exclusive content if they play one of these new versions as well, though there's, uh, there's no word on any kind of discount uh, upgrade for any of that. So. Moving on to other blockbuster games, Ubisoft continues to say kind of weird things about Assassin's Creed Unity. This time, they're explaining why characters in revolutionary France don't have French accents. In short, you can thank the Animus for a flawless translation, which means there's no accent. Except there is an accent, and it's British. Uh, well, I mean, it could be more of a TARDIS. That one does an accent. However, I guess this time the Animus won't translate everything, because there is plenty of background NPCs who speak entirely French. They have no translation, so you're going to have to pull out your French book if you want to écouter to what they're saying. I used that joke in my read, and I still like it. I feel like it's a, they made a gameplay decision and they're trying really hard to cobble some lore together to make it make sense, but it just, it just doesn't. I mean, I don't know. I feel like there are two camps of people. The people who liked the Italian accent and Ezio and people who didn't like it. And if they didn't like it, they're happy with this change. And if they did like it, they don't need people who they can't understand to add color. They need, they want an accent. If it's going to translate with no accent, why are they British? I agree. I agree. If, it's, it's, if it knows that you're an American male, why does it not translate with an American accent? Also, I think it's weird that a French team said in a quote that <clears throat> is in the story that we did that they thought that this game was serious and French accents wouldn't make people take them serious and it's like or take them seriously. So why why do you think you sound silly? Like why do you hate yourself so much, French Ubisoft team? Maybe they listen to themselves. Oh. It's been a big week for Destiny. Bungie launched raids with the Vault of Glass and the first six-man team beat it in just 10 hours. Well, I say just, but it was 10 hours of playing with a grand total of 1,600 deaths. That's like, that's an average of 2.6 deaths per minute. Activision has also revealed the real sales numbers for Destiny after last week kind of whisking out and just releasing their day one ship numbers. In the first five days, the game made more than $325 million, which still makes it the best new IP debut, though frankly it would look more impressive if they hadn't trotted out that $500 million day one ship number. Way to make your own huge accomplishments seem small, guys. That's 65%. That's terrible. It, it, I just, I agree. If they hadn't said 500 million, I would have been like, oh, 325, great job, guys. But I'm like, oh, it's not, it's not what you said before. Yeah, it just ends up being kind of silly. Yeah. Uh, but hey, you know what? More games for you to trade in for free ice cream, at least if you live in California. As part of a county's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, every Saturday in October, families will have the opportunity to exchange violent video games and toy guns for free Ben & Jerry's ice cream. Because as many of our commenters pointed out, that's still probably a better trade-in value than you're going to get at GameStop. Booyah. Or if you'd rather be a lover than a fighter, perhaps we can interest you in Oculus Rift's newest boob squeezing simulator. A Japanese man programmed this demo and to simulate the breasts, attached a mouse pad to a frame and added sensors to it. In a weird turn, if this didn't already count, the female character being groped in the demo backs away and becomes visibly uncomfortable, a behavior that was intentionally programmed into this demo. We talk more in depth about how weird this is on our weekly gaming podcast, The Patch, as well as the Mojang acquisition and, of course, tons of destiny. Tons of destiny. Spoiler, Ryan's still angry. Oh. Or, if you're more into esports, remember to check out the leaderboard where we'll take you through the Riot World Championships, StarCraft's offseason, and big changes to Hearthstone. World Championships going on right now, it's so crazy. Go Team Solomon. Now it's time for TVs and movies. Lots of rumors this week. Since we talked about Assassin's Creed a bit earlier, 
let's start with the rumor that Robert Downey Jr. may be joining Michael Fassbender in the movie adaptation of Assassin's Creed. He's rumored to be taking on the role of Leonardo da Vinci opposite Michael Fassbender. As to who Fassbender will be, well, it's still kind of murky. IMDb has him listed as Desmond Miles, the modern day character who tied the earlier games in the series together, but other rumors believe he's playing Ezio Auditore. If the latter is true and RDJ is indeed playing Da Vinci, then this has some pretty serious implications for the film. Firstly, it means that it's skipping over Altair's story completely. Secondly, that it's going to be an adaptation of existing material rather than a new story set in the Assassin's Creed universe. The movie was slated to hit theaters May 22nd next year, but has been pushed back to 2016, which I think we all called since yeah. they haven't even established cast yet, and they were going to try and get it out by next May. Also, they keep yeah. saying he's the lead. They're like, oh yeah, uh, Fastbender is going to be the lead, and it's like, which lead, bro? Like, <laughs> I get that really, uh, you know, we wouldn't call Desmond the lead in Assassin's Creed, but I think a Hollywood blog that doesn't know the game would probably call him the lead. So he could still be Desmond, he could still be Ezio. Or he could be both. He could be everyone. Maybe it's one of those flashbacks where you look exactly like your ancestor. <laughs> he plays every role in the movie. <laughs> and everyone has a British accent. <laughs> there are rumors I'm more excited about though, like the rumor that Obi-Wan Kenobi may get his own spin-off Star Wars movie after a poll of fans crown him the most popular character in the Star Wars universe. I don't know how he managed to beat out Han Solo, Boba Fett, Darth Vader, come on. But he did. Well, maybe people don't like being force choked. They don't know how to live. <laughs> Lucasfilm is planning three spin-off movies to intersperse between the entries in a new trilogy. One is being helmed by Godzilla's Gareth Edwards and is written by Book of Eli's Gary Whitta, while another is being made by Chronicle's Josh Trank. But that's the extent of what we really know so far. Supposedly, The Empire Strikes Back writer Lawrence Kasdan may be working on a screenplay in addition to Episode 7, and so is X-Men Days of Future Past Simon Kimberg, which, but which team might tackle the Obi-Wan story? Still a mystery. Until there's like another set leak, because there have been about a thousand. And there will be a thousand more. Fortunately, J.J. Abrams, the director of Episode 7, has been a little bit more forthcoming because he took to his Twitter to post a first look at the Millennium Falcon in a cheeky blow to Batman vs. Superman's Zack Snyder. Over the weekend, Snyder reignited the all-in-good-fun fanboy's dream war when he tweeted a photo of a stormtrooper being arrested after trying to steal the Batmobile. Abrams responded with a video clip of the Millennium Falcon and what looks like a Batmobile hitting a ride. When directors fight, we win. I love it. I just, I just want to pit all my favorite directors against one each other now. This is like the grown-up version of kids taking a whole <laughs> bunch of action figures and just like making them fight even though they don't really make sense. Now, kids. <laughs> well, Batman might have new superhero competition soon because Marvel's Doctor Strange movie has finally got a production start date of next May for July 2016 release. The movie is being written by Prometheus scribe John Spates and directed by Sinister Scott Derrickson. The lead hasn't been announced yet, but Joaquin Phoenix is rumored for the role, though last month Boardwalk Empire's Jack Huston was also said to be under consideration. He is a hot man. Me. Interestingly, Dan Aykroyd has spoken up following Bill Murray's recommendations of female Ghostbusters, and while he's on board with that case, he thinks the Ghostbusters could take a page out of Marvel's book and build an entire cinematic universe around the property that encompasses a more ambitious timeline and a complete mythology to explore, of which a Lady Ghostbusters would be just one element. I don't know. I'm look. Marvel is sort of a unique case in that it has hundreds and thousands of comics to draw from. Ghostbusters doesn't have that. I'm not sure that there's enough material. I agree. I feel like unless it was some sort of like team up movie, I, I feel like it would be hard to make them part of this bigger universe. Like I understand making it a reboot with with women, and you know you can feel about that how you may. I think it's a cool idea, although I don't. I don't know, I'd rather see them just do something else, but I don't know, I feel like if you're trying to make it part of this bigger universe, the original characters have to make an appearance and they're not all here anymore. R.I.P. Harold Ramis. Some properties are just happy to do their sequels in a happier note. Some really, really ridiculously good-looking properties. In case it's not clear, I'm talking about Zoolander. Will Ferrell, who played the villainous Mugatu in the first film, has confirmed that not only is there a script, but that he's slated to come back. And I love his character. He's so great. Tiny cell phone. <laughs> this follows the news last month that Tropic Thunder's Justin Thoreau was optimistic it might be getting up and running. If you're a fan of movies and TV, don't forget to check out our podcast, Screenplay, dedicated to those exact topics. In our newest episode, we relived the finale of Lost, debated it was good, it was bad, talked over the upcoming Hunger Games movie because there's a new trailer for that, and watched There Will Be Blood. Our movie for next week is Clerks, so if you want to watch that before the next episode, you can join in on the discussion. 37! Shall we move on to tech and science? That's a Clerks reference, everyone. <laughs> Take note. <laughs> 
Well, it's iPhone week. Actually, it's iPhone day. And no one's found a new dinosaur or invented hover cars, so there's not a lot to talk about in tech and science. But since it is iPhone week, did you know that they broke their own record? I might have heard such a thing. Hmm. <laughs> Honestly, it shouldn't surprise them much at this point since the upper trend is pretty consistent. But in the first 24 hours, 4 million people pre-ordered an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, leading to shortages that are seeing some versions of Apple's new smartphone stickers as far out as November. Some consumers are speculating that the shortage may be artificial and that Apple must have predicted these sales numbers. After all, 2 million iPhone 5s went out in the first 24 hours and 5 million over the first weekend. When 5S and 5C came out, that nearly doubled to 9 million in the first weekend. So, come on, they had to see this coming. I agree they had to see this coming. And furthermore, I'm sad. I don't have my 6 Plus that I wanted, and I had to just get a 6. Oh, you bitched out. I should've, bitched out. I full on bitched out. Should have held your ground. There should be a red stamp over my face that says bitched out, right? <laughs> Please don't do that to the <laughs> internet. That's all for the Know It All this week. We'll be back next week with another download of all the news you need to know. But if you don't want to wait, you can always come over to the Know where we're hanging out every day, and we show you the news as it newses. And we do this with our hands. A lot. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Good night, and good luck. Not the worst thing the internet's ever done to me if they do the bitched out, I guess. <laughs>